Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So today in this video, we'll be seeing how to create a custom. Okay, so customers can be found inside sales. So when it's sales, it becomes customer. When it's a purchase module, it becomes vendor and so on. It changes, but the thing is that creation process is same for all. So I'll just go to the sales module and show you how to create a customer. So we've opened the sales module and inside the sales module, under orders, you have the option called customers. Okay, so open the customer. You can see all the previously created customers here, which are there in your system. Okay, so we are like we have Dequedict, Azure Interior, Wood Corner, and so on. So to create a new customer, what you have to do is click on the new icon over here. And this is how a customer creation form looks like. Okay. So there are two options. It can either be an individual or a company. Okay, your customer can be an individual or a company. So if it's an individual means he belongs to a company. See, so if I'm creating a new person, let it be John. And here comes an option called company name. So here you have to specify which company this individual belongs to. Okay, so if you are choosing company means you don't have this company name. Instead, you will be na naming the company from here itself. Okay. So that's the only difference in individual and company. So here you have individual. I'm creating an individual. So let it be, as I said before, John. And here I'm choosing the company he belongs to. So let it be Gemini Furniture. Okay. Now here is the contact details. Now all these details came from the parent company. Okay. That individual who belongs to Gemini Furniture, contact details of this company will be taken uh, to the, you know, creation form. Okay, so here is the contact creation. Now here you have the tax ID. You have to specify the tax ID over here. And here you have the job position. So me mention a job position for the person. So let it be sales director. Here you have the option to provide the phone number for that person. You have the mobile number, email, website, title and tags. Okay. So here you have to specify a website for this person. If he has any, then you can specify that. And also you can give a title. That is what you are going to address that person, whether it can be a miss, ma madam, mister, whatever it is. So I'll choose the title as mister. And here you can specify the tags for this person. So customer tags, which is basically used for easy identification of the customer. So you have these things like employees, prospects, services, vendor, consulting services, whatever it is. So based on your, you know, scenario, you can choose the tag over here. So I'll choose the tag as employees. So this can be used to identify this person and also we can filter based on these tags. Okay, so that's the uh, tags under the customers. Now here you have the option to add font tags and addresses. Okay, so that is at a time you can add multiple contacts for a single customer. Okay. So I'll show you how to do that. For that, you can add it from here. Click on add icon. And here comes the contact creation. Now you have this contact, the invoice address, the delivery address, follow up address and other addresses. Whatever your addresses you can choose. So I'm going to create another address. Okay, so I've chosen other address. And here you have to give the name of the contact. So I'll give John other address okay so this is for us to identify easily i'm naming it as john's other address so here comes the address this will be of the company and you can change it from here okay by default this will be the address okay and here you have the email phone mobile and all you can simply save it and close it or else you can save and add a new one so i'm saving and closing it you can see other addresses added now, if I want to add again one more address, so I'm adding a delivery address for John. So I'll put as, sorry, John's delivery address. Okay. Now here also, if you don't mention anything means it will take the address of the parent company. Instead, you can change this address. So I'm keeping that address as such. And here as the previous step, email, phone number and mobile number is there. You can simply save it and close it. See, so we have added another address for the person, delivery address for the person. Similarly, you can add as much address as you want. That is contact, multiple contacts or multiple contact addresses can be added to a single customer. Okay. So you have things like add a contact to 
corresponding to that person see the contact name the title which should that is what we should address that person as that title can be specified here the job position of this particular contact which we are mentioning the email phone number and mobile number similarly you have the invoice address the delivery address follow up address and other addresses okay these are the addresses which comes under the contacts and addresses section okay next you have a tab which is called sales and purchase so here you will have to specify all the details regarding sales and purchase corresponding to this particular customer so here you have the sales where you can specify the sales person okay for sales for this customer can be assigned to a particular sales person so if you want to do that means you can do that from here so let it be michelle atman and then you have the payment terms over here okay so you can set a default payment terms for this person whether it's an immediate payment of 15 days 21 days 30 days 45 days whatever it is you can choose a payment term for this person so if you just put at the field help you can see this payment term will be used instead of the default one for sale order and customer invoices that is whenever you if you are mentioning 15 days and you are using this person inside a sale order this payment terms will be taken there in that sale order okay so if you leave it as such means you have the option to change it from this so i'll just put as 45 days and the price list are managed on the parent company as i said before this is an individual and he belongs to the company the price list details alone will be taken from the company okay now then you have the delivery method which is local delivery okay so whatever the delivery method is you can choose it from here whether it can be a standard delivery post and local delivery whatever it is so by default it comes local delivery so i've taken local delivery so you can see this is the default delivery method used in sale order okay now here if you just take a look at the purchase section you can see the buyer similarly like similar to the sales person we can set a buyer for the purchase module as well corresponding to this custom so that can be done and then you have the payment terms for the purchase that can be used in here so which will be further used in the purchase order okay then you have the payment method so this is actually the preferred payment method similar to the sales itself you can choose the payment method so see the payment that is the preferred payment method when paying this vendor this is used to filter bills by preferred payment methods to register payments in mass use cases can be create bank files for batch wires and check runs so this is a payment method simply a payment method okay that is how you're going to pay so you can choose it from here that is whether it's a manual payment or checks by checks whatever it is you can set it from here and here comes the receipt reminder so that is to automatically send a confirmation email to the customer that is the vendor sorry x days before the expected receipt date asking him to confirm the exact date so this is simply a confirmation email sent to the vendor okay so there'll be a date and that that is there'll be an expected received date so on that date or before that date you are sending a confirmation mail to that person and he that is the vendor will confirm it and you can you know just confirm that your payment or the received date is set okay so that's the receipt reminder if you want that to be enabled you can simply check it here okay and specify how much days before this mail should be sent now you have the point of sale where you can set a barcode for this customer similarly you have the fiscal information where you can set the fiscal position so this is basically used for the tax calculation and all okay and here you have the miscellaneous section where you have the reference the website and the sla policies so sla policies this is for generating the tickets and all so that's the miscellaneous section now you have the accounting section of the customer so here we no need not you know apply any accounting because this will take the accounting um, you know settings related to the parent company so let's go to the parent company and see how the accounting was done there okay now we are here under gemini furniture you can see the people okay the, the contacts which are there you know here you have john the one which we created going to the accounting section so here you have the account number the bank and you know the sent money or formatting all those things okay you can even add accounts to this bank accounts okay and here you have the accounting entries where you have this account receivable and account payable okay now let's go back to the customer so where is john yes 
we've chosen that person. So we we were in the accounting section, right? So accounting and all is taken. So we've chosen the other customer, right? We'll search for John. See, this is the person. Now here under John, we've added all those people. Okay. Now here's the accounting. As I said before, this is related to the parent company. Here you have the internal notes. So if you want to write any internal notes, that can be written over here. Here you have the partner assignment where you have the geographical location. Okay. That is the longitude and the latitude. Now, this will be compute based on the address. Now, here you have certain smart tabs which shows meetings, opportunities, sales. And if you expand the more section, you have subscriptions, purchases, on-time rate, invoice, vendor bill, partner ledger, documents and go to website. Now, once you start using this particular customer in sales, purchase, subscriptions, opportunities everywhere, once he involves in all these things, the count which is shown in these smart tabs will change okay now you can you have this meetings as zero if if this person is initiating a meeting means the meeting count will change similarly if he does a sale or he's part of a purchase all these things will lead to a change in the count which is given in the smart tabs so that's how you basically create a customer so i hope it's clear for you guys thank you so much for watching see you in the next video